is uh, CO2 H2 we have a reactor this is called a reformer the petroleum industry is full of such reactors actually they have they keep rearranging the molecules if they want carbon monoxide you cannot uh, it is safer to store carbon dioxide mix it with hydrogen get some carbon monoxide here what you have here is carbon monoxide uh, CO2 hydrogen H2O and carbon ok the reactions given uh, CO2 plus H2 giving you CO plus H2O and then CO plus H2 giving you C plus H2O. In these cases the Kp values are given. at 1000 degrees so not much work for you in fact log kp values log to the best base 10 kp is given for the first reaction this is minus 0 0.2 the second one is minus 0 0.5 then two more reactions are given given as 0 0.7 <coughs> given as 0 0.3 this ratio is given 1 is to 1 the problem in such reactions this is typical of uh, reactions where a solid carbon is formed need not be carbon there are many complicated reactions in organic chemistry where you have a, something that is formed in the solid uh, phase and usually that ends up poisoning the catalyst. So, it is generally called coke when they say coke does not mean uh, carbon necessarily it means any organic solid uh, substance that is formed during a reaction that ruins a catalyst and the it, that ruins the catalytic activity. So, the idea is to prescribe how much of this can be formed I mean sometimes there is a tolerance. So, they will say you are permitted that exactly 20 in this problem it says if exactly 25 percent of the carbon coming in as carbon dioxide may deposit on the catalyst at what pressure should the reactor operate that is the question. Temperature is usually fixed this is uh, more like its considerations process considerations probably the particular process has carbon dioxide and hydrogen available at 1000 degrees. So, it is no point cooling it and then heating it for faster kinetics and so on. So, they operate at 1000 degrees, but they want to know essentially if this should be 0 0.25 that is 25 percent of carbon entering as CO2 that is specified. The question is what is the pressure range of pressures it says actually should be less than so the four re possible reactions are given in all these cases the reactions are listed without reference to how many independent reactions you have. So, the first step is to find out the number of independent reactions and uh, for number of independent reactions you have to write down the stoichiometric matrix you can do that or you can do this by a simple rule for which in fact I think I told you the rule number of independent reactions it be interesting to see if you can come up with an exception this rule is only a heuristic rule it is right 99.9 percent .9 of the time if you can come up with a set of reactions for which it is wrong I would be very interested 
the rigorous proof is simply this you take the stoichiometric matrix in this case and take its rank that is the number of independent reactions that is simply the theory it is from linear algebra. So, you can work that out, but the simpler thing is to take the number of species at equilibrium in this case 5 minus number of elements required to produce them. In this, in this case it is 5 species at equilibrium minus 3 elements which is carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So, with those 3 you can produce all of them therefore, the number of independent reactions is 2 actually more rigorously it is the rank of the stoichiometric matrix. The trouble about finding the rank of a matrix is you have to take all by 3 by 3s and show that all the determinants are 0 by that time the quiz time will be over. So, it takes you all of 50 minutes to find out if to ensure that the rank is not 3. But in any case you have 2 reactions so you can choose any 2 reactions normally the way to choose this is like this you are asked for pressure choose one reaction which is unaffected by pressure and one reaction in which the carbon you know there is a specification on carbon. So, make sure you choose one reaction in which carbon is produced that is the convenient way in this case it will be reactions 1 and 2 because here the number of moles does not change therefore, it is unaffected by the total pressure and the total number of moles and this one produces carbon. So, you can just you can choose any 2 actually it does not matter which ones you choose the final result will be the same. But uh, for your computational purposes it is much easier to do it this way otherwise you will solve simultaneous equations for the pressure. Let us look at equations 1 and 2 the first reaction is that K p we will use K p and then go to K f if necessary we will assume K f is approximately equal to K p we can verify if the pressure is high you can go and correct it next time correct for K p p is large that will be the second iteration. So, we will take k p 1 and it is equal to so total pressure by number of moles to the power delta nu 1 we will label all these species call this component 1 hydrogen will be 2 this can be 3 this can be 4 and this is 5. So, let me write out uh, the this is simply N 3 N 4 by N 1 N 2. this is equal to exponential of whatever is given minus 0.2. If you look at reaction 2 again the same rule you should write K p prime reaction 2 involves a solid. So, you leave out the solid when specifying the so it will be N 4 by n 2 n 3 this is equal to exponential of minus 0 0.5 actually it is not even exponential it is 10 to the power minus 0 0.2 and 10 to the power minus 0 0.2 given as log to the base 10. So, we will work out the moles at equilibrium it is always good to do a degree of freedom calculation to begin with 
the number of degrees of freedom is simply the number of components minus the number of faces plus 2 minus the number of independent reactions. So you get 3 degrees of freedom right this is components this is number faces so one solid phase carbon is present and this plus 2 is by Gibbs and this is number of independent reactions. Three degrees of freedom. Your the temperature has been fixed. You have two degrees of freedom left. What are the two degrees of freedom? I'm. I want you to find the pressure. So you must tell me the independent ones that I'm fixing. That's a special constraint. I have to put it in. Correct. That is a constraint. So it will determine, so let us say you lost 1 degree of freedom by that specification. If you say carbon deposition should be 0 0.25 for 1 mole, what else? There is 1 more degree of freedom. Let us do the problem and come back to it because there is it is a bit tricky but it is nice to know the degrees of freedom before you do a problem. But let us discuss it here first of all I have carbon monoxide in the output let us assume that x1 moles of um, let us say carbon dioxide or hydrogen let us take hydrogen x1 moles of hydrogen are converted in reaction 1 and x2 moles of reaction or moles of hydrogen are converted in reaction 2. Right, each reaction has one independent progress variable. The progress variable is the same as the num change in the number of moles of one of the species. Normally it is taken for a product species maybe I will say H2O. So we will say H2O conversion, H2O formation. It is same as this but the minus same. So if x1 moles of water is not in the input so this is x1 plus x2 at the outlet. Then if you look at carbon monoxide this is produced in reaction 1 x1 will be produced x2 will be consumed. If you look at carbon dioxide it is consumed here it is not produced at all so it is 1 minus x1. 1 enters and x1 is consumed. You look at hydrogen it is consumed in both reactions so it is 1 minus x1 minus x2. Carbon is produced only in reaction 2. And then for reaction 1 delta nu 1 is 0 delta nu 2 prime the prime comes in because the solid stoichiometric coefficient of the solid does not count. So it is 1 minus 1 minus 1 so it is minus 1 so I should have written when I say prime here I mean prime here also. So the first equation this is 0 so I do not have to worry about this I have to count the total moles total moles in gas phase so you should make sure that you do not count the carbon this is solid so total moles is 2 and x1 minus x1 minus x1 plus x1 so x1 does not appear minus x2 minus x2 plus x2 minus x2 
only this part counts. So, I have n 3, is this in the correct order? No, carbon monoxide is 3 and CO2 is 1, H2 is 2, H3 is 2, H4 is 4. So, I have N3 which is X1 minus X2. into N4 which is X1 plus X2 may N1 is 1 minus X1 okay, N2 is 1 minus X1 minus X2. This is 10 to the power minus 0.2. This one will be 1 by p 2 minus x2, the total number of moles, because delta nu 2 is minus 1, it will be nt by p into n4, which is x1 plus x2. divided by n2 n3 1 minus x1 minus x2 and n3 is x1 minus x2 So, I have x1, x2 and p, I have two equations but three unknowns. However, so you need one constraint at least, that constraint has been given to you. First question is if the carbon deposited is 0.25, what is permitted you assume and then ask when will it be less. So, if x2 is given as 0.25, so given then it is straightforward to solve, you can solve the first equation for x1 and then solve the second equation for p. Can you do this? So, that we get some numbers for discussion x2 is 0.25. So, you are talking about x1 minus 0.25 into x1 plus 0.25. So, it is x1 squared minus 0 0.0625 divided by 1 minus x1 will remain. It is only a quadratic and this is 0 0.75 minus x1 equal to 10 to the power minus 0.2. It is just a quadratic, so you will get two roots, tell me both roots in case one is negative we will of course drop it. We are talking about x1 squared into 1 minus 10 to the power minus 0 0.2 then x1 comes from here this is minus 1 minus 0 0.75 minus 1.75 into 10 to the power minus 0 0.2 into x1 then the constant is 0 0.75 in 10 to the power minus 2 to come to this side, so it is minus 0 0.0625 plus 
0 0.75 into 10 to the power minus 2 sorry minus 0 0.2. What do you get for x1? Are there two roots? Okay, 0.425. Is that right? There is only one calculator, so you are the final boss. <laughs> Hoping somebody else would have one. We will come back to degrees of freedom. So, what do you get for p? For x2 equal to 0 0.25, you have x1 is equal to 0 0.425, and the p you can do. P is simply 10 to the power 0 0.5 into 2 minus x2 which is 1.75, x1 plus x2 is 6.75 divided by 0 0.325 into x1 minus x2 is 0.155. One seven five. Sorry. What eighteen? About sixty actually. Very high. Oh, there is a competitor here. I didn't notice. Oh, got some more. I didn't think I saw so many. Mm. much 60 about 65 in atmospheres okay notice p will come out in atmospheres because of the convention your mu 0 was by definition the chemical potential at the temperature t in one atmosphere now how will you decide what range of pressures to operate at what i want is 0 0.25 or less of carbon This is the calculation for exactly 25 percent of the carbon being deposited. If I wanted less, this reaction should proceed less. Right? What happens to this reaction as you increase the pressure? This reaction is unaffected by pressure. So, you are looking at one reaction affected by pressure. If the pressure increases, what happens? Either you are comfortable with Lechetli as principle. It simply says things will happen in such a way as to prevent what is already happening, which is applicable to governments, which is applicable to IITs, everything. If something is happening well, things will happen so as to prevent it. <laughs> so, here if you if what happens if you increase the pressure? That what happens when the see number of moles decreases, right? Therefore, the pressure will decrease. 
So, a decrease in pressure will oppose it, an increase in pressure will favor this reaction, correct. So, if P is greater than 65, so first of all, number of moles of carbon is X2. Notice X2 increases as P increases. Therefore, range of pressure is simply range of pressure is 0 to 65. Minus x2 cannot be equal to. Say that again. Uh, because eventually we need CO, C n product. We should also calculate when x1 equal to x2. So that will be the lower bound for the pressure. We'll try that out. You are saying this is one. The other possibility is you are saying I want x1 greater than zero, right? That's all. all no carbon monoxide is assumed okay x1 should be greater than x2 so you put x1 equal to x2 and calculate the pressure here so when x1 equal to x2 right this is this side is zero what's the conclusion you started the this has to be 10 to the power minus 0.2 so x1 minus x2 cannot be 0 only a fraction of the carbon monoxide that is produced here can anyway be consumed here maybe 99.999 percent bit so this problem does not arise in this case as long as the pressure is less you will get now what happened to the degrees of freedom number of degrees of freedom as we calculated it was 3. I fix the temperature I should have I should have the freedom to fix I fixed the carbon deposition so two variables were fixed what happened to the third degree of freedom and no by degrees of freedom I mean three variables that I can fix independently right then the system becomes invariant. I did not fix it. Is this a constraint? No, tell me. No, is this is this a constraint on the degrees of freedom? Is this also an input constraint? Actually, it is, but it is not always this. The point is this hydrogen and oxygen are in the ratio 1 is to 1 and they remain in the gas phase there is a constraint that in the gas phase hydrogen to oxygen ratio should be 1 whereas the minute I produce carbon for carbon there is no such constraint because part of it can be in the solid phase and part of it can be in the gas phase. So all elements that remain in a single phase are constrained by input ratios the ratios of elements that remain in a single phase are constrained by the input ratio not elements like carbon in this case as soon as you have carbon deposition thermodynamics will not tell you the extent it will only tell you both phases exist it will tell you what fraction do not tell you what fraction should be in the solid phase what fraction should be in the gas phase you are right but you are right only to the extent that you are talking about the ratio of oxygen to hydrogen so in reaction systems there is another degree of freedom that is lost. So, we leave this here and discuss degrees of freedom here. I think I will write it out. Degrees of the number of components minus minus 2 minus actually number of independent reactions minus 1. This is for special constraints, they are always there. In this case, x1 x2 equal to 0.25 minus again another special constraint I suppose I should write minus 2 for special constraints one of them is this the other is ratio 
of hydrogen to oxygen in gas phase. The carbon in the gas phase is not so constrained. Although I sent only one atom of carbon for every mole of oxygen, part of it can deposit in the solid phase. So, I have no constraint in the gas phase. See, it does not matter how the compounds rearrange themselves, they are all in the gas phase, and in the gas, gas phase, oxygen and hydrogen ratio is restricted to 1. Oxygen may be in CO, in CO2 or H2O, it can be in 3 different places, but the same oxygen is redistributed, same hydrogen is redistributed because the ratio is constrained to be 1. So, I could use 1 is to A and ask if there is an optimal value of A. If I want to readjust this, in this particular problem 0 to 65 is a very convenient thing. I mean, thermodynamics permits you a whole range of pressures and including low pressures. So, I will probably operate at one atmosphere, 0 I will have to worry about what leaks in, more than 1 I have to worry about what leaks out. So, I will just operate at one atmosphere and be done with it. But if I was using this incidentally as a process for producing carbon. I mean this carbon may be activated carbon depending on its structure, depending on the way I get it, depending on the surface area I get may be very useful. So, I may actually use it then I may say rather than x 2 constrain it as x 2 equal to 0.25 or less say at least 25 percent must be carbon it really depends on your local interest. If I do that then I will have to go to 65 atmospheres do you think by changing this I can change that pressure. Suppose I use 1 a 1 is to a you can keep one of them as always 1 because it is only the ratio that matters. It is possible right if I send in more carbon I am likely to get more carbon uh, in the input then I am likely to get more in the output. So, you can keep this as 1 is to a and what should a be a may turn out to be 0 0.2 or something may be an optimal value it is obviously you will have 1 degree of freedom. So, you can choose a and do this redo this calculation it is a lot of routine things, but you have to do the analysis clearly and then submit it for calculations. In fact, the biggest problem as I told you once in the present chemical industry is that they have online control for many of these things. So, online control the operator sitting there will have to control the input in such a way that he gets the desired output and the whole calculation in, in a thermo in a chemical industry this online control problem is mainly troubled by delay that is you measure the product if it is not of the desirable quantity you send the difference as input for controlling and that measurement comes too late. So, if it comes after one day your batch is spoiled that day's production is spoiled. So, what they do is act quickly so they have a model of the process. So, they run all the disturbances in the input through the model and the model predicts what is going to happen and on that basis of that prediction that is used in a feedback loop. In that model prediction the hardest part of it is the thermodynamic package because you have to go and calculate thermodynamic properties and come back and that takes a long time. The thermodynamic package itself see typically here two equations this is two if you have 14 simultaneous equations you can run into all kinds of trouble solving them because they are non-linear equations. You often have to give guess values and start them off I mean because it is a quadratic you would solve it directly up to cubic under certain conditions you can solve directly otherwise you are going to guess iterate you will do a Newton Raphson on it and this can go haywire depending on your guess and in thermodynamics it is very very sensitive because if your x goes negative then all those equations are meaningless and therefore you will get uh, it will complain it will say you are trying to take the square root of a, a negative number and all kinds of complaints and uh, so, what you need is a whole package that will do this incidentally there is a thumb rule that you should know in all numerical calculations generally true in engineering, but I may as well tell you it is particularly true in thermodynamic packages. If you are solving for some variable x as a root of an equation if you are doing a Newton Raphson search what is Newton what is Raphson is it I forgotten R A P H is it. Flow is not famous, 
you know you got tagged with Newton. So, you start off with a guess value what will it does Newton Raphson does this and then it converges hopefully. So, after this is iterations on the in the x axis. So, you guess this this is the beginning value x 1 0 then this is x 1 1 this is x 1 2 and so on. The thumb rule about Newton Raphson is that it predicts the correct direction of change, but it often over predicts the change. So, what you do is take x 1 0 you find a delta x and add it you will get x 1 prime. So, this <coughs> this value is often negative if this is 0 you often go oscillating on either side, but thermodynamics will not permit you to get negative mole fractions first of all there will be a log x 1 somewhere. So, it will say log of a negative number and it will throw you out. So, the thumb rule in these things is to say x 1 n is x 1 n minus 1 the previous value plus delta x predicted from Newton Raphson right delta x 1 Newton Raphson or any other technique that you have if you are using Picard's iteration you will still get a delta x. So, the thumb rule here is multiplied by a moderating factor beta beta is a factor usually beta is chosen if you do not want to do a detailed analysis beta is chosen as 0.1 in chemical engineering this is just experience on a large number of what it says is the new x 1 prime will not go here it will take the direction of change proposed by Newton Raphson, but take only one tenth value. So, the second value will be here so it will hopefully go like this you would not oscillate violently this is very important for practical computations anyway this is another uh, problem that I want to discuss I, I do not know if I discuss this problem of limestone decomposition. And I do not know if you see it these days I have long since I travelled by train uh, when you travel by train do you see these kilns that uh, have you seen these or have you maybe you would not recognize them have you seen devices like this from the train and with some smoke coming out of it. <laughs> These are actually what you have is a grating here and there is an opening here and what they do is add CaCO3 calcium carbonate in actually they add calcium carbonate from the top they add some coal I should write it in this way if you actually watched it there is a place for cleaning things up, but what they do is add CaCO3 and uh, coal carbon then what comes out here uh, either they add carbon here or sometimes they just burn it burn fuel usually if it could be charcoal or it could be actually they would not do this carbon is too expensive. So, in we this could be even firewood but firewood is a bit tricky because you cannot get the temperatures required very often. So, you have what you have here is CO2 coming out the reaction is simply CaCO3 giving you CaO plus CO2 this is solid this is solid this is gas. So, very conveniently for you Kp prime oh is equal to simply partial pressure of CO2 right this is total pressure into y c o 2 in the atmosphere partial mole fraction of carbon dioxide is typically 10 to the power minus 2 10 to the power minus 3. So, if this is equal to of course, exponential of minus delta g 0 by r t this part is thermo. delta g 0 is a fun this is a function of temperature alone so what you do is calculate the temperature at which this total partial pressure of carbon dioxide is one atmosphere then you are absolutely safe there is no way the whole atmosphere will be if the whole atmosphere was co2 you will be dead anyway so you cannot have any interest in the proceedings so you sort of calculate this to be one atmosphere and ask when is what is the temperature at which this typically delta g 0 is given you can calculate this is known to be 500 degrees in fact most of the people in the at least the older people in the villages will tell you they would not tell you 500 degrees 
they will show you a stove which is burning with firewood and say and the naram varano naram means color you know that the from the uh, color of the flame they can tell you what the temperature is so they will tell you this color uh, comes there then the temperature is 500 degrees and if the temperature is 500 degrees they know that they are getting calcium oxide here they won't even bother to test they'll just pull it out and use it I'll give you the time stone caco3 I'll give you oh this is standard formation data in calories per gram no it's here delta g 0 and delta h 0 are given this is delta h 0 298 this is also 298 this is minus 269.78 this is calories per gram mole. Sorry, no, no, this is not two sixty two sixty nine seven eight zero, and this is minus one forty four four hundred. No, oh, got the numbers all wrong. This is for CaCO3, it is 268, 288, 450. Then, uh, yeah, that is correct. For CaO, it is minus 144, 400 and minus 151.900. Then for CO2, this is minus 94,260 and minus 94,052. But let us ignore delta Cp for now. So, you have to go through this of course. D delta H0 by dt is delta Cp0. If I have taken this as 0, then delta H0 is constant. And then you have d of delta g0 by t by dt is minus delta h0 by t square. So, your delta g0 by rt is equal to delta g0 298 by 298. plus delta h 0 by r, it is better to keep the r in. Simply if you integrate you get just 1 by t, so it is 1 by t minus 1 by 298. So, if you want one atmosphere for this partial pressure of carbon dioxide, you simply set this equal to 0. Right, this is equal to 0 for P C O 2 equal to 1 atmosphere. Actually these are not delta G 0 values, I apologize, this is G F and H F for the pure compounds, you have to calculate delta G 0 for this reaction. Right. So, in do this calculation you can show it is about 500 degrees centigrade. So, in each of these reactions you do not have to play it so safe you can even have partial pressure equal to 0 0.5 and do the calculations or 0 0.1 and you are not really worried about carbon dioxide except that you do not want carbon dioxide to sit here and ruin your game. You know, if all the carbon dioxide sits here you will have partial pressure 1 atmosphere locally. So, it will spoil your reaction you must have flow as long as there is flow there is no problem at all. This is hot, so this will rise. You must have enough vents here for the air to go through and overcome the pressure drop. This what happens is this becomes a packed bed. This is solids packed up to here, lots of pellets. 
and so you have to overcome this pressure drop and the gas will have to go out. So the buoyancy will have to be sufficient to take care of the pressure drop per flow. And very often they will do something very clever, they will throw in a few stones and you wonder why the fellow is doing that. It is actually to produce as the limestone decomposes it forms CaO and if you have some stones the CaO is smaller so it will pack very tight after a while. To prevent that you put this diluent which is simply stones, sensible thing is to put these stones that are available right there and just throw them in. Actually the guy is doing a very clever job of keeping the porosity of the bed at a proper value that is if you have all same size particles your porosity will decrease. If you have uh, if you all same size particles you will have a reasonable porosity. If you have particles of different size they will pack in tighter over a period of time. So the idea is to have a base of stones that are of a reasonable size that provide the porosity and then the others will 